Hey folks! Well, here we are in this long off-season. Listen, we're going to look at the back end of the roster and figure out what can be done this off-season. We're looking specifically at the D and goal. We're going to break it all down for you right here on the Ozone. You're in the offensive zone, your place for Leafs hockey. Hey folks, welcome to the Ozone. That's Coach, that's KD, and I'm the Devo. We're here to talk all things Leafs. Well, Shanahan likes Dubas, and Dubas likes Keefe. We've discussed this already in previous pods, but what to make of this roster? It seems to come up a little short every year, and I think that's a theme I might be breaking into in a little bit. We're going to focus our attention uh, on the job that Dubas has this offseason addressing the back end of the roster. KD, if you are Dubas, put on your little Dubas jacket. Yeah. What do you focus on this offseason as it relates to the D and goal? Well, and, and the players you got there. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, truthfully, if you look at the, the D compared to where it was two years ago, it's way better. And I would say the depth that Toronto has on D might be as good as anywhere in the league. Where they're the problem is they're they're very deep on the left side, not deep on the right side. And as Coach pointed out so very often, a major issue we found is we didn't really have our top four D being able to play back to back. You know, you were yeah. you were pushed over on one side. You know, arguably our our best left wing our le- best left shot D uh, is Brody who has to play on the right side. So what he has to do is get someone up at the top on the right side that that has got to be the number one priority i think there's lots of depth i think we got to cross our fingers and really hope that we get sandin and lilligren healthy lilligren made huge steps i never thought he was going to be an nhl player he is i think he's legit one i think hall had an up and down year but he certainly played decent in the playoffs he's still at a bargain price at two million whether you have to move him to upgrade at the right on the right side that's one thing but I don't mind him in there for depth. And then, again, if you can get someone up there to push everyone down, I think that's the real key. To be able to play your top 4D and roll them over, um, is is that's what they need to do to be successful in the playoffs. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Uh, it, it, it seemed a bit frustrating when Muzzin went down there uh, towards the end of the year and they started really shuffling everything all over the place. Uh, you know, they never really gave decent partner to Riley and that's how we went into the playoffs coach what does Dubas have to do you're absolutely right Mike it was a big failing of Sheldon Keith not to try Hall with Riley before the end of the year to see if that could work because Labushkin didn't um so what what would I love to happen I would love for us to get a stud no doubter right shot D to play with Morgan Riley yeah. that would be fantastic I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you pull it off. We're real tight to the cap. But that would be fantastic because then TJ Brody could play second pair of minutes, maybe even plays the left side. I don't know. But, Kev, you already touched on how we're misconstructed or ill-constructed. So that's got to change. You know, the other part of it is um, Jake Muzzin was better than any of us thought he would be in the playoffs. He was actually really valuable. Mm-hmm. But I'm concerned about him, and he makes 5.6 in change. So, you know, he didn't really he, – he was hurt for much of the season. Um, he's not getting any faster. Even when he wasn't hurt, he was questionable with the puck. Him and Hall, that, that pair two years ago was great, not so good now. So yep. I think the two toughest spots to fill, right, three toughest spots, starting goalie, uh, stud right D, and center – Right, top six center. That's what we need. But that's so I don't think we can fill that. Here's what I would do. So thanks to our graphics department for putting this sweet graphic p- package together. I would reunite R- Brody with Riley. We need Riley to be good. He's going to pull down seven and a half next year. He's got to be good at least for the first half of that big extension. Yeah. Sand in and Lilligren, I would play as a pair. Um, let's just play them all year, get them some experience. They have to. We can't afford to do anything different. And then here's the thing. I would keep Gio. He wants to play, so I think we can get him for $2 million or so. He was okay. 
third pair guy. And between Labushkin and Hall, frankly, I kind of prefer Hall, but he makes more money. So I would move Hall out, and what I would do is I'd try to move Muzzin out. Because not that he's not effective, but he makes so much money. So my 7-8, my depth guys are Christian Rubens, and like a free agent type guy, like a Luke Shen maybe, you know, that type of guy for depth. Or Topi Nimala, although he's a little guy too. So yeah. I'd, I'm not addressing this like I'd like, Mike. I would love us to have Tampa's defense with big guys like Bogosian and Chernak and Head. Well, nobody yeah. has Headman, right? But I think this is what we could do. Yeah, I, I, you made a couple interesting points. A couple things I might push back on you on. If you're able to sign Geo and Labushkin for cheap, great. Labushkin played a whole lot as a Leaf, and he's probably and his agent are probably rubbing their fingers, going like. Listen, he played with Riley for the whole playoffs. So you got to pay him like a top four guy. He's going to make more than $2 million next year. I'll tell well, you that right does, now. So, so let me be clear. If he does, that could happen, Mike. Um, then he's gone and you keep yeah. Hall. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like I, his I, ruggedness, I but... Yeah. Oh, it's, pretty, yeah it's, pretty, I, it's pretty easy though, right? You have, you have a $2 million guy for a year. If you can get, if you can get Labushkin for less, great. If you can't... Yeah, and it's yeah, that's right. our, our, yeah, it's... our our right our third pair right D is going to make two million. Right. Yeah. If you want it to be you, Ilya, and we do need an Ilya because we're <laughs> losing the other Ilya up front. <laughs> yeah. If if we're uh, if we're if we're going to actually t- keep this graphic up there, I I would I would consider swapping out uh, Lilligren and Labushkin. Lilligren and Geo had something. They had some magic there, and and that might be something uh, uh, you could you could rely on. Yeah. And Sandy San, Sandine might like to have a little bit of sandpaper bes- beside him. Labushkin tends to be more of a stay at home guy. I just like that that kind of balance. That, that not that, too bad. Uh, I, I don't mind right. it at all. Yeah. Obviously, look, the cap is going to be key here, folks, and and it's hard to look at just one grouping because obviously you're going to have to be creative all across the board. Uh, the Leafs have some decisions to make. Gio, Labushkin, obviously, they're both UFAs. Um, Sandine, Lilligren are RFAs. So you, you actually have some decisions there, too. Everyone's going to be costing yeah. more. Um, so how, how do you factor that in? Look, it's going to be it's going to be real, real interesting and real tight. And they might have to move some assets. Um, one of the assets I think we can all agree with and I'm going to sort of skip ahead here and maybe look yep. at the def- at the goalie side of things. We have Campbell, who's a UFA, and I think the Leafs are going to move heaven and earth to try to, to, to ink him to, to a deal. I don't know what that looks like. My gut tells me it's probably under 5.5. Around 5 is the sweet spot for the Leafs. Campbell's agent's probably thinking 6. So it'll be interesting to see where that lands. That's That's how I'm seeing it. But they got Mrazek locked in for two more years at 3.8. Shelgren, they got for another year at 750000 And to me, I, uh, I think I think Mrazek's played his last game in Toronto. So what do you do here, guys? What do you do, KD? Well, you, you try, do your best to try and get that whole contract off. You probably don't. You probably have to eat some salary. So... Uh, if you buy them out, which they have the ability to do, yeah. it's going to cost a little more. I think on average, it's what, you know, just over a million and it's just under a million. And then it's a million yeah. and a half for the next two or three years after that. So, you know, if you can have someone eat it for uh, a million, um, you know, now you're looking at two and a half, two point eight million as far as, you know, cap uh, to, to use. So that's probably the number you unfortunately have to use. Um like again, if put it his way, if Dubis can get him off for nothing, um, he deserves a full year. <laughs> he he might deserve the contract going, you know, for, for one more year after this. But but yeah, I, no, I think I, they're going to have to eat a bit of salary. I don't disagree. Uh, now let's remember that most hockey people in the world weren't just watching the Leafs all year uh, and, and for the last several years. Mrazek had an absolutely abhorrent season for the Leafs. But he massively underperformed, and he's been a very steady performer. So I, I would think that his value in the marketplace is a little bit better than than uh, uh, than what typical Leafs fans would sort of peg for him after the disastrous year he had. But it is a results league, and no one's gonna no one's gonna want to well, overpay. Yeah, maybe but- there's an option. 
the, Sorry, the, go ahead, the big problem The big problem with him is his injuries, right? So he's been injured three years in a row and injured a lot of this year. That does not help moving a contract, right? Like, I, I have, I have yeah. no doubt that people would overlook and say, listen, he's a much better goalie than that. But you don't want to take spend 3.8 on a guy who's going to be on the shelf for half the year. They, they, people just yeah. won't do it. So, I, you know, I think that would be the big problem. I suppose there's an option there that you could, if you're if you're packaging him in a trade, he's a bit of a downside to an upside part of a trade. You might be able to to look to doing. Coach, you know what what do you think uh, uh, on this back end? So, in, with my roster, I have six million dollars to spend on goaltending. Okay, now I just got rid of Jake Muzzin. You could argue don't do that. In which case, I don't have very much at all. But the way I look at forwards, D goalies, F six million, and the way I would do it is, um, I would spend five million on the starter, roughly, and a million on the backup. Um, even John Ferguson Jr. could determine that we got to get rid of Mrazek's contract. So that's easy. That part's easy. I'm, I agree with you, Kev. Like if if it's buying them out or moving them, you got to move them, even if you keep a million in salary, because you only keep that for two years instead of four, the four year for right. the buyout, right? So, um, or maybe you throw in a throw in a pick or something. But um, you know he's going to have to do something similar to what he did with Nick Ritchie. Not even the Labushkin piece of that. Right. We yeah. would take that that deal minus Labushkin. He might have yeah. to move so, Labushkin with him. Yeah, no, right, right. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, so what that means is, and I would, and, and I believe both guys need NHL experience. Shelgren was pretty decent, but uh, Campbell's going to be up and down. He has had some injury trouble too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think you want two NHL goalies, uh, and have Wall and Shelgren split a year AHL and get them like overripe, right? Right. So that means Campbell's got to take five. And it gets real sticky if they if he won't take five because there's yes. not a whole bunch. There are 44 UFA goalies out there with NHL experience, but 30 of them made a million or less. Thir- all those guys are replaceable. Yeah. Like we'll sign one of those guys as the backup. I don't know Malcolm Subban, somebody like that, right? But we got if Campbell loves to be here, let's hope he takes five and he and he is here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be real interesting. Moving that uh, Mrazic deal is going to really uh, assist with how a lot of other things shake out. We're going to get into some other things a little bit later on on some on, on some future pods, folks. So make sure you subscribe because we got some material coming at you. I I can't I keep coming back to this one thing, and I, I'll just leave you guys with this: the Leafs have to get bigger on the back end. Period. And I, I, I have to say it again, or I, I have to say my piece on this. They got to get bigger, and I know that's going to be a real, real challenge with where they are at the cap. Big D cost a lot of money, but it don't matter if they want to get out of the first round. That's where they got to spend it. There you have it, folks. This is a long, long off season, but we're going to be here right with you all the way, right here on the Ozone.